Put a smile on your face when you're moving from place to place. place. Good morning. Good morning and welcome back, viewers. And now that we are switching from the world of politics, we'll be sterilizing, pulling out our microscopes and jumping into the field of science. So, viewers, right here this morning, I have with me a few members from the Society for Inherited and Severe Blood Disorders, and then we'll be discussing about some meetings and blood drives that they have upcoming. So I want to say a special morning to the both of you all, and how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. All right, so starting from my far right, I'd like for you to introduce yourself and tell our viewers who you are and what you specialize in. Right, I'm Dr. Victor Wheeler, Medical Chief of Staff of the Scarborough General Hospital. And I'm Karen Louis Ovin. I am the President for the Society for Severe and Blood Disorders Tobago Chapter. All right, so before we delve deeper into our discussions this morning, um, blood disorders, especially in primary school, we will hear some of them most notably the sickle cell anemia. You know, sometimes we see that child who can't go outside, they can't be in the sun too long, they can't yeah. fall down. So um, tell us a bit more about these inherited disorders. Inherited disorders. Sickle cell, well, main, one of the main problems is cyclism, pain crisis. Mm -hmm. If it's too hot, they would have problems, they would have pain crisis. If it's too cold also, they would still have pain crisis. So they have to have a balance where they have to drink lots of water and, you know, take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. With hemophilia now, it's a clotting disease where the blood doesn't clot on time. So they could bleed to death. They are known as bleeders. Thalassemia also is one where the red blood cells are not being formed at all. So those persons have to get a top up of blood for the lifetime, unless if they get a bone marrow transfer. Okay, great. Dr. Will, anything you want to add? Well, um, these are what we call inherited blood disorders. So the, it's not something that you acquire, you are born with. And it's essentially because various parts of the blood cells aren't formed properly. So like in sickle cell disease, they sickle or get hard, depending on the conditions, as Ms. Irvin said, if it's very hot or very cold. So why the society is here is to try to educate members of the public about these conditions. The society is there to provide support to persons affected with these conditions. And we are also trying to mobilize them so that they can join the society, either persons who are directly affected or they know family members or friends who are affected by these various blood disorders. Okay, great. And um, do you have any upcoming events, any upcoming meetings that people who are affected or who are family members that are affected by these disorders, they can reach out and get in touch with you all? Yes, every third Saturday we do meet at um, the hospital, the LRC room. Mm -hmm. But right now we have an upcoming blood drive, which is on the 23rd of May. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be held at Glen Road and uh, the, um, the compound of Glen Road. Where, um, it's where the, the TRHA division, yes. head office and the yes. division of head office is. Okay, right. right. That's a Glen Road yes. near where community development is. Yes. 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 Right. yes. So blood doning, I think people oftentimes overlook the importance of donating blood mm -hmm. and how it helps to, you know, stabilize and maintain our medical field. So since you all are the expert, please tell our viewers why it is important to donate blood. Well, for us, it's the case of our inherited blood disorders, but also, look, we have frequent shootings, and mm -hmm. one of the main things would be top-ups of blood mm -hmm. because persons would be bleeding out. And also, we want to have a register where we could have continuous supply of blood. This is why we really want to push this initiative. This is going to be the first one. We want to continue so at least we know we have a constant supply. Right now we have a patient who needed blood and they had to ask for donors and they're saying that the blood has to come from Trinidad and then it has to be replaced. So we want to have a continuous supply of blood. This is what we want to have in this in our space in Tobago. And that patient, is that the young? I think I would have seen a flyer circulating on social media. Young guy here in Tobago is in urgent need of blood. And um, you know, he's somebody I would have seen around. You know, I've seen him probably daily walking through Scarborough and to see that flyer and see that he's in a state now that he needs yes. blood. I think it's a really, it's a really sad. It's, 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 it's really sad. So viewers, you know, if, if you're listening to us this morning, you know, a youth, we're on the youth show, a youth is in need of blood. So if you can, yeah. please donate blood. So how can someone become a blood donor? If it's, if, if it's, if it's a one-time thing or they can um, register to become a blood donor, how does becoming a blood donor work? 
All right, so the, the Ministry of Health has a website that you can go on that points out all the various things you need to give blood, who can give blood, who can't give blood. That's one way. The other way is to contact the blood bank at the Scarborough General Hospital, um, where you can call to make an appointment mm -hmm. to give blood. But what we are really interested in is having persons registered to become regular blood donors, and they are giving blood just for the benefit of giving blood. That way, we would have a list of persons that we can call on to say, okay, a person who is registered can give blood between two to three times a year. That way, we can manage our blood stocks. For Tobago, we are looking for between seven to 800 persons to be on that register so that we would be able to manage our blood stocks for the hospital to avoid persons needing blood, having to beg for blood as it is now. Whenever anybody needs blood, there's already blood supply available. And this is something that is being done not only in Tobago, but in Trinidad. We are trying to get away from the current chit system, whereby when you give a pint of blood, you're given a chit to say that you have donated blood. And if somebody needs blood, they have to bring in chits from other persons who have given blood. That is a system now that is not working. We are trying to get persons to voluntarily register to give blood so that we can have adequate blood supplies and those same persons giving blood two to three times a year. That way we are sure of the quality of blood that regular persons are given. Okay, understood. And being a blood donor, what are some factors, some lifestyle habits that will most likely disqualify you from being a blood donor? Well, certainly we don't want persons who have multiple partners engaging in unprotected sex, high risky behavior, um, persons who ha currently have infectious illnesses. Mm -hmm. The recent guidelines have changed, whereas in the past you could not give blood over 60. Now there's no age limit for giving blood. The minimum age is 18. Even if you have diabetes or high blood pressure, those things would not disqualify you from giving blood. When you come to give blood, you will have a check. We'll have a blood test to make sure your blood count is okay, and they will accept uh, the blood. Okay, understand. And also, um, no fresh tattoos. Oh, okay. yes, right, right. yes, that's to be over here. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. No yeah. fresh tattoos. You no. know, no multiple partners. Yes. What about um drugs like? marijuana and those stuff can someone who is a uh... well we would obviously discourage Discourage, persons yeah. who have who are using those sort of drugs to come and give blood okay understood. um there are some benefits for giving blood if you give blood on a regular basis it helps to stimulate your immune system mm -hmm. there's some argument where it could even help with managing obesity okay. but essentially the main benefit is your contribution to the society because you can never know when you yourself never, yeah. or a family member or someone you know well would need yeah, blood. If you are a regular donor, is one way of ensuring that there's adequate blood supplies in the blood bank so that when anybody needs blood, blood is available. But we do need some members of the community, minimum 700, to become registered regular blood donors who will give blood about two to three times a year. Okay, understood. And touching on the walkathon, the upcoming walkathon, tell us what do you hope to achieve from from that walkathon? What is the what is the main goal of the walkathon? The walkathon would be held in Trinidad. Hopefully, we don't have our setup for next year. Mm -hmm. We're just going to have the outreach with the blood donation at mm -hmm. Glenwood on the twenty third. Okay, great. Yes, right, understood. And um, I would like for you all to remind our viewers and our listeners once again how to register to become a blood donor, where they can go, if it's at the, there are multiple locations, can they go to a health center? Do you have a, a, um, a van that goes around collecting blood? Let us know all availability options. Right, so essentially this blood drive is being held at the head office of the TRHA and the Division of Health on the 23rd of May, mm -hmm. where we will, we actually have two mobile chairs that we can transport to the facility. But the blood bank at the hospital is open 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Monday to Friday, and also Saturday morning. For those in Trinidad, you can go to any of the public hospitals where the blood bank is there to give blood. 
if you have a group of about 10 to 12 persons, for example, in a workplace where you want us to come to you, you can contact the hospital. And we, what we would need to do is assess the space to see if there's enough space for us to have the chairs. There are certain things we'd need to do to engage in privacy. Yes. But we can actually have a mobile unit coming to you if your group is large enough. Okay, understood. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up? No, this is it for me. Okay, great. So, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Contact number. My yes. number is 391-4087. As I said, my name is Karen louis Oven. So if you have any questions, any queries, any concerns, you could contact me at that number. All right. And so I want to thank you for joining us here this morning to have this informative segment. Um, you know, especially with all that's been going on thus far, you know, it, we would have learned the importance of donating blood yes. to um, to help stabilize our medical field. So viewers, for those of you that are viewing the room and those of you listening, those of you viewing now, register and donate your blood because we need it, or youths need it, yes. or hospital needs it. So get out there, reach out to them, get the information and help to build a better medical field. So Thank you once again for joining us this morning, viewers. We are at the end of the morning show. So I want to thank you all for joining us, for sticking throughout the entire segment. For those of you who will be sticking with us, remember to share the live, share the live, share the live. We'll be switching over to Good Morning Tobago with Candy Jackson. Once again, I'm Luke Trim. And thank you for choosing Tobago Updates to start your morning on the right notes.